Six oh, four eighty. Yeah. So I thought that was extra funny, and I don't know. They wanted to see it. They, you know, neither of us were happy that happened, but it worked out for the best. So, Abel Chief writes in and says, "Tom, regarding your lost thirty ninety, everyone's putting it in quotes. Everyone seems to be on the same page. It was probably stolen." He says, "I want to give my condolences. I almost feel like getting mail insurance on a USPS package is like painting a big red target on it, especially in today's world of high inflation." It is a double-edged sword at best, but this way at least you've gotten some of your money back. Do you think UPS or FedEx might have better shipping options, even if it's a little more expensive? That one's hard for me to say because I know people getting their packages stolen from everyone. Yeah, and it's not like just a USPS thing. And I had very, very good luck with USPS before that. Um, I, I have some suspicions that specifically what could have gone down, but I... I don't want to get into it because it's like, why make allegations or whatever, but, you know, we've seen packages get stolen with all of them, honestly, and I don't know what to say except that it can happen and you should get insurance because they will pay it and they did give me money back, so I, I would say get the insurance if you need it, right? <laughs> um, all right, let us then move on to corrections. Brett Summers writes in and he says, I have a correction about the 13600K versus 7600X discussion you had in Broken Cell Comp 182. You stated that the performance difference between the 13600K and the 7600X was 10% of gaming. And it's not. According to Hardware and Box 50 ish game tests, the 7600 and 13600K are within 4 to 5% of each other most of the time, which is less than a gap of Zen 2 to coffee or commonly for gaming. Which most people seem to agree is virtually identical, and I provided a link to prove it. Uh, Brent, when I say that I'm talking about the you know, i5 with DDR4, because, and I probably forgot to say that in that conversation, but when I talk about how the 7600X beats the i5 by 10% in gaming, I mean, if you're run, using run, the i5-13600K with DDR4, and I'm not run. crazy, right, Dan? That's what we see on Reddit, people saying, well, do my DDR4 i5, and it's like, well, now that you're like, you are a lot weaker than the 7600X. Yeah, that, I mean, that's going back to, like, the whole conversation where we've had where people are, Let's like, go, trying go. to have their performance cake and uh, eat their money-saving cake, too, if that makes any sense. And it's like, I don't know what your goal is here. Uh, you're the person buying this stuff. <laughs> This is what you need to like inflate like your purchasing decision. I, I guess yeah, you can yeah. do that, but it's it's stupid. Right, and so I guess what our point is, it, well, my overall point is, is decide which one it is. Are you trying to save money or are you not? If you're trying to save money with the i5, you're getting a DDR4 system. It is weaker. It is just as close to Zen 3 performance as it is to 7600X DDR5 performance, and you're still going to need to get way more expensive cooling. So there is a cost saving because you went with DDR4, but you could have also gotten a 5800X 3D, cheaper DDR4, cheaper cooling, cheaper platform, and it would also be the or tie the i5 or something in game. And so I, you know. But if you're going for maximum performance, that's only a little weaker than the 7600X when you're buying DDR5 and all this other shit. So, you know, like, and that's my point. And no, I, I, I probably throw around that phrase too much now. And I need to say an i5 with DDR4 is 10% worse than 7600X. I probably forget to a lot. Um, all right. Asenius Chalmers writes in and he says, Looking back to the RDNA3 leak from April 2022 uh, from your channel, and then looking around at other people's Navi 31 and Navi 32 specs leaked around the same time eight months ago, at least a lot of the rumors pointed to 15360 stream processors, 256 uh, bit bus, 375 to 400 watt TDPs, and 256 to 512 megabytes of Infinity Cache. Um, with multiple graphics dies proposed by some people in a singular MCD slash IO die, it seems like the only leak specs that survived until now was a chipbook architecture with five and six nanometer TSMC nodes. To be frank, what happened? Were these different prototype designs that ultimately were shipped or scrapped? That information from the sources either intention, intentionally or unintentionally. So, uh, yeah, I, I will say this. I wish more people would 
some magic corrections when a link we brought out is wrong, but that's why we have a correction section. Um, but all I can do is speak for what I said. I never said 15,000 cores. I never said, you know, some of the things you mentioned, like multiple graphics dies. What I knew at the time is what MI300 looked like. That's really correct. What I also knew at the time is a host of specs for Navi 31, 32, and 33. It seems like the host for 33 is correct. It seems like the performance. I was to say the performance really is. We'll get into that in a second. Um, but yeah, the Infinity Cash thing. The Blizz thing, I don't know. I think one of my sources was mixing up some of the Navi 32 specs and some of the Navi 31 specs. At the same time as we know that Navi did play around with uh, the Infinity Cash specs that were 2 and 3 high. So, yeah, there's no way around it. There were some prototypes of that much Infinity Cash that didn't come out. And uh, all I can say is some of the stuff just didn't pan out. And I was preparing a leak right before Extronomics put out that, and probably threw it a month after his article out, um, about like correcting some of the specs, like before Extronomics confirmed the specs, I knew about the 3D format thing. Um,